Australopithecines are considered the most likely ancestor of modern humans. These primitive people lived on the African continent between 7 and 1 million years ago. It was they who first manifested some of the traits that were later characteristic of the genus Homo, that is, people. Scientists now know about several varieties of Australopithecines. In this issue, we will take a closer look at each of them. Australopithecines are an extinct group of the hominid family. During their development, they were upright creatures to varying degrees. Later Australopithecines had already completely switched to walking on two legs. It is believed that they lived in small family groups, like modern chimpanzees. The brain volume of Australopithecines was close to the brain volume of these monkeys. Their body proportions were close to those of apes such as bonobos. The height of Australopithecus did not exceed 1.5 meters. Interestingly, the average height of males was 50% greater than that of females. In modern people, this figure does not even exceed 25%. On average, men are only 6-10% to taller than women and 15% heavier. The name of this ancient anthropoid creature simply means southern monkey. It appears thanks to the place of residence of these ancient people. They lived in areas south of the Sahara Desert. There are also later finds of the remains in North and East Africa. Like chimpanzees, Australopithecines were characterized by associations consisting mainly of males. They controlled a certain territory, protecting their females. It is believed that only young females left the family for other groups although there is evidence of harems belonging to one male. Australopithecines had a fairly wide pelvis. This made walking on two legs more comfortable. It's unlikely that they were already capable of long journeys on foot, but gradually they were forced to master this method of transportation. At that time, the climates on the planet became hotter and drier. The tropical jungles and the Australopithecus habitats gave way to vast grassy plains. Upright walking became the key to their survival in new conditions. Thanks to this, evolutionary changes occurred, which ultimately led to the emergence of Homo sapiens. The ancestors of modern apes lived in more forested areas. They didn't need to walk on two legs a lot. The trees provided ample food and served as protection from natural enemies. Therefore, modern gorillas, chimpanzees, orangutans, and primates have developed completely different skills and structural features. Higher growth allowed our distant ancestors to notice creeping predators in time. Also, with the release of the forelimbs, it became possible to carry cubs in them or take weapons and tools. With the help of a developed thumb set to the side, it was easier and more convenient. Even chimpanzees sometimes use rocks and sticks as weapons or tools, but Australopithecus more often walked on two legs. Therefore, we have achieved a little more in the ability to use available tools. Later representatives of this genus may have been able to independently make primitive stone knives and wooden spears. They ate mainly fruits and nuts. There was practically no meat in their diet. Scientists divide all currently known Australopithecines into three groups. Early, living approximately four to seven million years ago. Gracile, two to four million years ago. And Massive, one to 2.5 million years ago. Not much is known about early Australopithecines. But, based on the available findings, we can say that they are most likely candidates for the title of transitional link between apes and humans. The earliest of them is considered to be the so-called Sahalanthropus. His partial skull, dating back 6 to 7 million years, was discovered at Toros Manala in the Republic of Chad. This ancient man received the second name, Tumei.
In Kenya, species of early hominids have been discovered, such as Auroran, who lived here about 6 million years ago, and Australopithecus anima, whose age is approximately 4 million years. Two more species of early Australopithecines lived in Ethiopia. Both of them belong to the genus Artipithecus. Some remains are 5.5 million years old, others are 4.4 million years old. The height of these creatures was slightly more than one meter. They lived mainly in swampy and wooded areas, as well as in forest steeps. All of them were upright, but still retained the ability to climb trees. The teeth of these Australopithecines are intermediate between humans and apes. It is likely that some early Australopithecines occasionally walked on all four limbs. At the same time, they rested on the phalanges of the fingers. This manner of movement is characteristic of modern gorillas and chimpanzees. Some scientists have even hypothesized that Sahelanthropus and gorillas are relatives and chimpanzees are direct descendants of Artipithecus. We know nothing about the descendants of Australopithecus anima. Perhaps it turned out to be a dead-end branch of development and did not leave any trace in the further history of life on the planet. The gracile Australopithecines are the greatest interest to science. They are the most likely ancestors of humans. At the moment, science is leaning towards the versions of the origins of the genus people, Homo, from Australopithecus afarensis. It is the most famous and well-studied species living in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Tanzania between 4 and 2.5 million years ago. They found skeletons of these ancient people vary greatly in size. It was probably in them that sexual dimorphism was very pronounced. The smallest skeletons are found just over a meter tall and the largest are over 1.5. Their weight ranged from 30 to 55 kilograms, respectively. The structure of the pelvic bones of this creature suggests that it moved exclusively on two legs. His arms were still a little longer and his legs shorter than those of modern people. The structure of the skull of the Australopithecus afarensis contained features characteristic of apes and massive Australopithecines. But he already has completely human characteristics. They also had protruding upper fangs, but these teeth are already much smaller in size than those of their ancestors. The most famous afarensis is a female named Lucy. Her skeleton was discovered in 1974. It is the most complete skeleton of the species. About 40% of the bones are preserved. It is believed that this young female died as a result of an unfortunate fall from a tree. Before Lucy's discovery, scientists had only a few femur bones and a knee joint at their disposal. One of the descendants of the afarensis is an Australopithecus africanus. He lived in South Africa approximately 2.5 million years ago. In this structure, this species is even closer to modern humans, but he still has some monkey traits. The first and most famous discovery of the remains of this species is the so-called Child of Tong. It was a partially preserved skull of a teenager found in 1925. While studying it, Raymond Arthur Dart put forward the version that it was an upright creature. This is indicated by the anterior location of the foramen magnum. It is believed that the massive Australopithecus or Paranthropus and humans also descended from Australopithecus afarensis. Homo erectus appeared on the planet at the same time, approximately 2.5 million years ago, but the massive Australopithecus eventually died out about 1 million years ago, and the descendants of erectus continued to develop successfully. With a small stature, like all Australopithecines, Paleanthropus had a very massive body. For example, the most famous of them Bayus Paranthropus 
had a height of 1.2 meters and weighed from 40 to 90 kilograms. Also, Paranthropus apparently relied on a large skull, or more precisely, a highly developed jaw apparatus. The jaw structure is typically for animals to feed on tough plant foods, leaves, stems, and roots, but most likely ate fruits, berries, and insects like termites. They did not eat meat at all. Some scientists claim that the human branch separated from the Australopithecus much earlier. They believe that our distant ancestors developed simultaneously with the gracile Australopithecines. Whether this is true or not has not yet been definitively established, but the evolution of these primates clearly shows us how the transition to bipedal walking affected the success of their existence. Lucy and Baby of Tong may not be human ancestors, but merely cousins. But our ancestors in those days looked and lived exactly the same. We are grateful to the viewers who watched this video to the end. You can learn more about the origin of other species of people and prehistoric animals on our previous videos.